Well, hello there. How are you doing? Need a third, don't I, so I can, like, crack them out in a row. Y'all are my babies. Does that work? No, that's kind of an end thing, isn't it? Anyway, I digress. God, I'm on it today. I'm on it today. So, look, Brian Koberger, Idaho 4. It's not a lot going on. There was a couple of things that I just wanted to mention quite briefly and bring your attention to, which some of you who are still following this may find quite interesting. The first being the conflict of interest between the attorney, so it would appear one of the victim's mums, um, Cara Northington, not Canodal. So she was given an attorney, and this attorney is actually Brian Koberger's attorney, so they have had to get a new attorney. So, yeah, that was quite an odd one. Bit of a conflict of interest there to have one of the victims of the Idaho 4 killings having the same attorney as the person who did it, potentially. So, yeah. Thank you for those who did point that out as the paperwork to show that that is indeed being dealt with and that has been swapped out. Wow. But anyway, look, that's, you know, that's that's being sorted. That's being sorted. We're not going to mention the fact that, you know, why is one of the victim's mums needing an attorney? Because we've done this before, including someone who reached out and offered me an interview with Zana's mum if I kept my mouth shut. And we swiftly told them to go and fuck themselves. But, look, so can you remember, right at the beginning of this case, there was a few people about, weren't there? You know, when we didn't have an arrest, we didn't know what was going on. The likes of Hoodie Guy, Jack, you know, they all got put in the firing line and you know it's it's not right but it happens and it's going to continue happening it's just the way things are because in these sorts of scenarios there are historic cases that kind of get thrust into the limelight and say look this is who did it in this one this is who did it in this one you know the watts case look who it was you know and I, I could I could go on, Brian, laundry, so on and so forth. Do you know what I mean? And and you know you know what I'm trying to get at. The, the the issues are is in a lot of these cases, the people closest to the victims are generally the people who it turns out was the perpetrator. And you're not ever going to be able to stop people thinking that they are the people involved. But one of the other people who was involved in this was Inan Harsh. Now, Inan Harsh came out of the gates and was quite a bizarre character. You know, he made some statements that didn't put him in the best light. You know, he was playing with knives and stuff like that and made some random comments online. But you will remember that he brought... He was the person who first mentioned that there was a recording. It heard something. It heard a scream, so on and so on. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of it because there is a video link in the description of this video, and I want you to go and check that out. This person has put this together, and they've done it very well, and I think that you should go and show them some love. But this is what I just want to say off the back end of that. So you'll understand where I'm coming from when you watch that video. And it's this. It's, we as content creators need to be incredibly careful what we do. Now, we can sit there and we can speculate. We can say, this is what we think. What do you think? And have backwards and forwards conversations. And, you know, there's some channels that are very good at that. But there are some channels that are very, very bad at that. And sadly, some of these channels that are bad at it are also very good at convincing people 
that the information that they are putting out has been verified. And then that becomes very damaging. Now, with regards to Inan Hash specifically, now he had obviously spoken about what he had heard on that night. And you'll watch that video and you'll see. But what then happens is a YouTube channel then puts out information surrounding an audio recording or things being said that then gets debunked because of what and how they've done it. So then automatically, anything that Anand Harsh then says is either scrutinized over and made it look like he could potentially be dodgy himself or that it gets mixed up, the truths and the falsities. Is that a word? Falsies? Don't think it is. But we can make it a word. You know, words come from somewhere. Why can't we make our own falsities? And look, at the end of the day, we need to do better as content creators. Now, if we are speculating, then say we are speculating. If we have someone on the show who is saying something, then get them to absolutely prove what they're saying. If they're saying they've spoken to someone or they got sent a message or they got, then show the message. Prove it. Prove it beyond a reasonable doubt that what this person is saying that you are pushing as complete and utter accuracy. Because if you don't, this is what happens. We will have complete conflicts of information. Like, as an example, Brian Koberger went into the Mad Greek restaurant at least twice. He was seen and had pizza. They remember he had pizza. So you push that across as absolute fact. Then you have someone coming out as, again, absolute fact. Brian Koberger hasn't been in this restaurant. So you have then conflicts of information. And that's what you can't have. You know, I know it's frustrating. I know... This waiting game is annoying as fuck. But we have to do it. We have to do it. And, you know, the, this channel here and the community on this channel, I absolutely love you. You are all absolutely fantastic, 99.995% of you. Because we can have speculation. We can discuss speculation. We can discuss our thoughts and feelings around it. And for the most part, we can do that in an adult manner. But we don't come onto the channel and push something and say, this is a fact. We just don't. Unless it can be said that it is 100% fact, it will not be said to be fact. And people in this arena need to be better. I've fucked up in the past and had to then come back on and say something else and, and put it right. You know, nobody is impervious to error but we have got to do better to make sure that what we are talking about is right and where people can easily get confused on what you're saying the difference between speculation and absolute fact we have to be more clear on that but go and check that video out and has Anand Harsh, because of the issues that were caused on social media, did a lot of his information that was actually critical to this case and potentially what happened and who was involved, did that get overlooked and disregarded? And was Anand Harsh not, in fact, the idiot or the dodgy person that we all believed him to be? But could he be a key witness, the zero to hero of this case? Go and check it out. Let me know down below. Show some love over at that channel. And um, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Catch you later. <laughs>